Hi everyone, I'm Miles Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the top five preventative maintenance tasks that you can perform on your systems that are controlled by either onboard controllers or a simple thermostat such as this. Now, the tasks we're talking about are not all inclusive, but they are the most bang for your buck to improve operating efficiencies, occupant comfort, as well as extending the life expectancy of your pieces of equipment. Task number one would be to review the operating schedules of your pieces of equipment. Now, oftentimes these operating schedules can be configured at the thermostats themselves. These operating schedules should match the occupancy schedules of the facilities that these equipment serve. So it's important from time to time, maybe it's quarterly, maybe it's monthly, or in the case of a school, maybe it's appropriate to do it weekly, review these operating schedules on the thermostats to make sure that they're appropriate. During unoccupied times, it's best to either shut off the equipment or to operate at different thermostat set points to save on the wear and tear as well as save energy. Task number two would be to review the set points that our systems are operating at. Here again we have the thermostat. It's operating at 74 degrees but it's trying to get to 71 degrees set point. Maybe that's too aggressive of a set point. Review these set points, figure out if they're appropriate. Also review the set points that the system goes to during unoccupied periods. Are they appropriate? Are they aggressive enough to really save us some energy as well as save on the wear and tear of our pieces of equipment. Now, another part of this would be, who can adjust these thermostats? This is a thermostat in a corridor in a middle school. We don't want just any kid making adjustments, so therefore, it's appropriate to have one of two features. On this case, we have to enter a passcode to adjust the thermostat. That's awesome, not every thermostat has that. If the thermostat doesn't have that feature, it's best to put a lockbox around that thermostat to prevent just anyone from manipulating the set point. Now let's go see how this concept can be applied to more sophisticated pieces of equipment with dedicated onboard controllers. So here's a chiller with its own onboard controller. Now this chiller is controlling to a chilled water supply temperature. And that particular set point is configured here on this onboard controller. Now hopefully this chiller and its onboard controller are located in a restricted area so not just anyone can be making adjustments to the set point. But regardless, whenever you encounter your chiller, you should do a sanity check and look at the set point that it's operating to. In this case, it's controlling to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I know this building, and I know this building was designed for a leaving temperature of 44 degrees Fahrenheit. So I hope I never find a value below 44. The fact that I find a value at 48 today is actually okay. It's milder out today. We have lower load on the building, and we raise this chilled water supply temperature set point just a little bit to improve the energy efficiency of this chiller. When I encounter big, sophisticated pieces of equipment like this chiller with its own onboard controller, I like to look at the alarm log, whether the unit is actively in alarm or not. It is this alarm log that allows the chiller to communicate to the building operator when something's just not right. This particular chiller is not connected to the BAS, so a lot of the faults in the history here may otherwise be masked unless the building operator really starts to look at that alarm log. And when you see these faults, it's important to really dive into them and find the root causes to what's going on. Because along the way, I guarantee you, you're gonna find operational improvements for your building as a whole. The last thing we want is a big, sophisticated, expensive piece of equipment like this chiller to be slowly dying, but no one knows it because no one thinks to check the alarm log. Another task I like to do when it comes to preventative maintenance for large pieces of equipment with onboard controllers is to do a gut check on the sensors that are reporting back to those controllers. Here we have four different temperature sensors reporting measurements on this particular panel here. In all cases, we have local thermometers that we can compare against. And if we're finding large discrepancies, that would be an indication that one of these sensors or multiple sensors have fallen out of calibration. And depending on what sensor that is, we might need to get that fixed right away to improve the operation of these large pieces of equipment. And finally, it's important that you walk around your facility and look at individual pieces of equipment to make sure that they're not manually overridden on or off. For example, here's an exhaust fan in an enclosed parking garage, which meets the ventilation requirements for this garage. It should only run when the carbon monoxide detector tells it to. If you walk up to this exhaust fan's VFD and you find it either in hand or off and not in auto, that's probably an indication that it's not been operating properly. Thanks for watching the top five preventive maintenance tasks for equipment operated with standalone controls. What topic would you like Maximize Your Facility to cover next? Leave your suggestion in the comments below.